how does the, the gut microbiome mm -hmm. impact our, our health span and lifespan? Yeah, so um, I think this is a particularly uh, fascinating area and, and one that I haven't delved deep into, but um, coming on this uh, um, show with you and um, having just an opportunity to think a little bit about it, I think there's some really interesting connections here. And so, um, you know, we talk about hormesis uh, uh, when it comes to uh, life prolonging uh, interventions. Um, and it, uh, fiber uh, by way of butyrate might actually be tapping into that mechanism. And if you can maybe simplify aging into two major things, one is DNA damage, and then the other would be epigenetic changes. Um, that epigenetic side of things is, is the part that we can modify, right? The DNA damage that's kind of done already, the telomeres they've shortened and that's done already. Um, but the epigenetics, there's different types of epigenetics, right? There's like, um, methylation of the DNA, which makes it really compact and you can't, uh, you know, access those genes anymore. They're, they're not active. There's, um, acetylation uh, that happens as well. And that does just the opposite. Acetylation opens up the DNA because it's binding to the histones and that kind of unwinds the DNA and makes it accessible. There um, are these uh, proteins, which are histone deacetylases uh, that remove those um, uh, compounds on the histones and shorten the DNA and, and compact it. Uh, and there's a really exciting um, area um, of how inhibition of those histone deacetylasers, um, HDAC inhibitors, uh, might be playing a really important role in lifespan. And so like sirtuins uh, are actually HDAC inhibitors. Um, and uh, nicotinamides uh, and reservatrol and all these compounds that we think about as modulating uh, potentially lifespan are tapping into that. Well, butyrate uh, is an HDAC inhibitor as well. And so right. um, it, it, it may be working on a somewhat similar uh, mechanism and inducing uh, through epigenetic changes, uh, hormesis. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe that's diving just a little bit too deep. <laughs> but, yeah. No, no that that sounds yeah. that, that 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 sounds really interesting, and it, it actually made me think about one other thing, which was, uh, although this is a bit more future, being able to, uh, I guess, generate bugs that would, in turn, generate the kind of uh, chemicals that we would want, and then having those bugs uh, populate our gut. So in like butyrate is something that we want, but maybe we want like some NAD precursor. So could we build a bug that would generate NMN and then populate our gut with it? And then we wouldn't have to take it. Yeah, so uh, you just keyed into something um, that I'm fascinated by. Where the heck does NMN uh, and NR come from anyway, naturally? Hmm. Um, and we know they're present to a certain degree in breast milk. Um, and, uh, there's a little bit of work that's been done on the gut microbiome and it's being synthesized there. Um, and, uh, I think more work needs to be done there. Uh, but it may be to kind of answer your question, maybe we don't have to actually engineer, maybe they're already there and that's kind of the, one of their natural purposes. And that's another metabolite that they're making as these NAD uh, precursors. Yeah, that would be really interesting if we could encourage them to grow. So they would they would create these NAD precursors for us. That, mm -hmm. I, I love the idea of, the, of the, the microbiome, like just doing all this work for us. It's, it's so good. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer, 
because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we are happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. Are there, is, is there anything else that you think we didn't cover that you would like to cover, particularly whether in my questions or, or elsewhere? I mean, one of the things we didn't touch on is how so much of dietary advice is around what to take away. Um, and there's so much confusion around, you know, is fat good or fat bad or carbohydrates good or bad? Um, it probably boils down to nuances. Some are maybe better than others, um, especially when we're getting too much of one and not enough of the other. And I would love to reframe this conversation around not just, you know, what we need to take away, um, but what we need to add back, because I think adding back is a lot more sustainable and actually biologically relevant. Um, it's not to say that there may be bad things that need to be taken away, but there isn't enough emphasis on what to take back, which I think is in the end, a more sustainable solution. And what the gut and the microbiome provides is a lens that's new and important beyond just the cells in our body, the cells in our gut uh, for what to add back. Um, and we didn't talk so much about all the things that can impact in the diet, um, the microbiome, I call them the four phonetic Fs. So there's fiber, phenols, ferments, and good fats. Um, fibers are probably one of the more important things. And if I had to pick um, a single fiber, it actually based on the research in terms of butyrate production would be resistant starch. And that's um, one of the things that I find so compelling about uh, the super gut product is, is the presence of that and the diversity of the, the RS and um, the opaque glucan there as well. So yeah, back to this idea of adding back and how that could be um, a big part of the public health solution because we've been telling people for way too long, uh, eat, eat better, <laughs> yeah. right? If we can just give them more direction what they need to add back and, and give solutions that are delicious um, and enjoyable and easy and accessible. Uh, I think that, um, that there's real hope for the future. We did talk about fiber, like trying to add fiber and there's not enough fiber. So you mentioned three other Fs. Um, could you just <laughs> talk a little sure, bit sure. About, about those? What, what are those and, and how would we add them back? Yeah, yeah. So um, moving beyond fiber, uh, I uh, summarize the the chemical uh, components in plants, the phytochemicals or phytonutrients is what some people call them as phenols. They're actually polyphenols largely. Um, these are the compounds that give uh, fruits and vegetables their color. And when people say eat the rainbow, that's essentially what they're advising. And, you know, eating a diversity of colors means you're getting a diversity of these um, polyphenols. Reservatrol is an example that's present in uh, grapes and, and blueberries and some of the darker colored um, fruits and vegetables. And um, the polyphenols traditionally are thought to be kind of antioxidants, but they're also prebiotics and they modulate uh, microbes, um, probably help establish balance and decrease inflammation. They're also hermetic uh, in nature. Um, so um, eating the rainbow uh, basically captures that second F, which is the, the phenols. The next F would be ferments. Mm. Um, that's a way of saying fermented foods or postbiotics captures both. Um, there's research that um, Justin Sonnenberg's group uh, did recently published um, in Cell out of Stanford that showed increasing fermented foods, decreased systemic inflammation and improved diversity of microbes in the gut. Um, and I think that's another really important piece of how we can use diet 
uh, to improve gut health. Um, and fermented foods, it's, you know, dairy fermented foods like uh, kefir and uh, yogurt, but also vegetable fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut and pickles, ones that you would buy in a refrigerated section, olives and um, things like that. Natto, if you've got a stomach for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then the last would be good fats. And uh, that would be omega-3. So omega-3s are the ones that tend to be more anti-inflammatory versus mm-hmm. pro-inflammatory. And there's some fascinating work showing that uh, omega-3s are actually prebiotics as well. So they're both impacting our immune cells directly, but also maybe helping establish a better balance of microbes uh, in the gut. So fiber, phenols, ferments, and, and good fats are the four phonetic Fs for uh, restoring gut health. Um, that's, that's my mantra. Excellent. Thank you. W- would you be able to share your personal protocol? It's, yeah. For what are the things that you aim for when you're looking at uh, your personal health? Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, uh, the four Fs are they mm-hmm. kind of capture it from a dietary standpoint. And right. um, I, I have uh, three young daughters, and we actually you know, talk about this at, at dinner table, and uh, they're fascinated by fiber, and always are asking me, "Oh, does this food contain fiber, Dad?" <laughs> and <laughs> so the, they'll they'll be little microbiome ex- experts by uh, the age of fifteen. Um, but, uh, if, if I move beyond food, um, mm. and, and the four phonetic Fs, there's the four Ms, mm. uh, and that's molecules, microbes, movement, and mind. And three of those, I think were pretty keyed into, and, and that would be molecules, movement, and mind molecules. Each of them has sort of positive and negatives. Molecules would be food and toxins. Mm. Um, movement would be, you know, exercise and activity versus sedentarism, and sitting on a couch and, you know, being a couch potato and watching too many, um, Netflix, uh, videos serially and playing video games too long. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, mind, um, this is a new comer on the block in terms of what promotes health, but this means, uh, getting appropriate amounts of sleep for seven to eight hours. This means taking time to clear your mind through meditation. There's actually well-established connections between mind health and gut health. It goes both directions um, versus say being stressed and anxious and, you know, being a workaholic and not sleeping and, and waking up too early and yada, yada, yada. Um, and then the fourth um Col M, I call them Col M's uh, <laughs> of health is, is the microbe piece. And I think it's really important to make this explicit. It's woven throughout each of them, but microbes um, are so critical to our health. Uh, and we're recognizing that through the microbiome, but this is really just the beginning. And it's microbes that are present in our gut. It's microbes that are present in our food and fermented foods. Uh, it's microbes that are present in our environments, like gardening and you know good soil. Um, I think that's that's a really important piece. And then at the foundation of these four columns is is community. Um, and um, you know, at the end of the day, what is this all for anyway? And what is it that that uh, inspires us and moves us? And it's you know relationships and those. Um, uh, relationships, uh, are the foundation of, of health, uh, in many ways. And the purpose of health is for relationships. One might say, um, the, this is kind of embodied by Dan uh, Bittner, who's a national mm-hmm. geographic correspondent in the blue zones. And that's a really important piece of longevity, uh, is community. Um, so yeah, molecules, microbes, moving in mind. Uh, with the foundation of community. And if you can keep all that straight in your minds, you'll, you'll live to be a hundred plus. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great way of thinking about it. Great. Okay. Yeah. So that was uh, great. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so where can people find out more about, uh, I guess, yourself, your work and super gut? Yes, absolutely. Um, so 
Uh, supergut.com is where you can find uh, more information uh, about uh, the product. And, um, you know, beyond just the shake, there's uh, a fiber blend alone and then also a delicious bar uh, that provides the same uh, fibers. And uh, there's also uh, a blog uh, on that website um, uh, for folks that want to delve deeper uh, into, uh, some of these topics. And so, um, you know, would encourage people to take a look at that. Okay. Excellent. Do you ship, uh, worldwide? I wish, uh, currently <laughs> it's, it's, it's just within the United States, uh, but maybe in the future. Okay. Excellent. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Yep. My pleasure. Mm-hmm.